Hey, this is Patrick with Rouse Garage. We're going to do a how-to on how to put in a big bore kit in this 50cc Tau Tau scooter. This is a 2014 model, only has about 800 miles. I have a big bore kit. People have been asking for me to show them how to do this, so let's do it. Check your local laws to be sure that what you're doing is legal. That's on you guys. All right, we're gonna start this project here on the bench. I like to lay everything out, make sure I have everything before I start tearing the engine apart. I do today. So we have a full gasket set that came with the kit. We won't use even half of these, but they're there. We have a new cylinder head. We have our new cylinder jug, brand new piston, new rings, the new pin, the new pin clips. Uh, we have new exhaust studs and new air gas mis mixture right, so we're going to start with our uh our head here and we're going to put our, the new studs on it so we're going to start um by putting these two sets of studs in this is the exhaust side you can tell it is because it has one or two ridges in here and then the air fuel mixture side that the intake goes on uh, it's going to be nice and flat so let's go ahead and start with the exhaust side first thing we want to do is tighten in these new studs so we're going to start them with our hands until we can't anymore and then we're going to go ahead and finish tightening them uh, on the part that does not have thread okay now that we have these exhaust studs installed we're going to move on to the intake we want to use the shorter thread side and just put them in just like you did this, the exhaust side. Okay, we're going to take our pliers and we're going to tighten them down. Right, our next step is to go ahead and uh, take out the seat and the front bezel so we can uh, get to the motor. So we're going to go ahead and pop the seat open. All right, once we're inside the seat, there's four nuts that need to be taken off. There's one, two, right here, and right here. All four of them. Go ahead and take those out, and then your whole seat will slide right out. I've already removed these to save time. All right, now the bolts are loose, we're just gonna slide this right out, set it to the side. Okay, next thing we need to do is take off this cowl. Uh, there will be Two screws, typically Phillips head, on the bottom. All right. Once you have those two screws out, we want to remove this cowl. Um, on the inside here, right here, right here, right here, there is three tabs. Um, on some of the older models, they're in there very good, and they're easy to break the tabs off. So just be very gentle with it when you're working on it and it will slide up just a hair there we go like i said just be gentle so that one wasn't the next step is to remove your stator and fan cover so we're going to find multiple bolts there's going to be one on the bottom here there's going to be one on the top here and then you have two screws that are hooked to the plastic housing right here. Okay, I'm going to set these to the side where I know where they're at. And then your housing cover should come right out. Underneath here is your stator and your fan. Okay, at this point, we need to remove the exhaust pipe. There's two nuts right underneath the motor. Follow the pipe up and get them. I don't like to use an impact wrench for these because I do not want to damage them whatsoever. So I will use a ratchet. They will look like that. Then we're going to find there will be two mounting bolts 
for the entire exhaust assembly. We're going to remove both of those. And I'm going to support it with my hand as I do so I don't damage everything underneath. And then you just have to wiggle it out. And it should come out relatively simple. There we go. So I'm going to set it off to the side. Set it underneath the 64 and a half coupe here. All right, now the fun begins. We're going to start tearing into the engine. First thing we're going to do is start removing vacuum lines, remove the spark plug, and get the carburetor out of the way. So let's go ahead and get the spark plug out of there. I like to just get it out right away. The reason for this is, is when I am setting my timing and make sure it's on top dead center, it makes the engine a lot easier to turn. So I'm just going to get it out of there right away. All right, we'll set that off to the side. Then we're going to start taking out vacuum lines. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the vacuum line that helps deliver fuel. I have another vacuum line here that has a clip. So we're just going to squeeze it, pull it down to the side, remove that vacuum line. These are maybe long enough. I could just leave them, but I'm going to get them out of the way just to save hassle. We're going to remove our two bolts over our intake. side and we're going to take this whole carburetor assembly lift it up and just kind of set it off to the side a little bit now I'm going to take a piece of twine um, and just tie it off so it's up and out of the way uh, you absolutely can just remove the carburetor it only takes maybe five more minutes um, but I just want to teach you guys the easiest way to do it. Um, you know, I like to keep things simple. So we're just going to tie that off. Make sure that you can still keep your drain hose hooked up. So that way, if it starts to flood at all, it'll just drain out. So, so we'll tie this guy off, move on to the next thing. All right, so next thing we want to do, remove this vacuum line, these ones get on there real good, so just do your best, work with it. Set that off to the side. And then we're going to go ahead and remove our valve cover. So there is one big black tube down here you might not be able to see. So, but it has a hose clamp on it, and I'll tell you what, I'll go ahead and take that off after I get the valve cover off so you guys can see what that looks like. This particular scooter has two ground wires, so make sure you don't forget about those when you reinstall it. Alright, we've got all the bolts off. Just simply pull your cover off. Here's the tube I was telling you about. We'll just take that hose clamp, squeeze it off, run it down. And these get stuck on there real good too. Luckily this one only has 800 miles on it, so it's not too bad. We're going to go ahead and tuck that underneath and out of the way. And we'll set our valve cover off to the side. Alright guys, before we get started, we want to make sure this engine is set at top dead center. So to do that, I'm going to turn the flywheel until I'm at top dead center. There will be one big hole and two small holes. And we want to line the two small holes up with the edges. So here is the first small hole. There is the other small hole. 
and there is the big hole, and the big hole should be facing straight up. So, you want to line these two small holes up level with the lip, and you want the small hole up high. And then we're going to go over the flywheel and double check right there. Let's do that now. All right, guys. Here we are at the flywheel. Um, we checked top dead center at the engine, and what we want to see is that the line with the mark T is lined up with this mark right here, and it is. So that's top dead center right there. That's where we want to be. All right, the next thing we want to do is remove the plastic housing that's around the cylinder head and the cylinder jug. So you're going to have two bolts. One's right here, right next to the sprocket, and one's right here. So uh, this one you can pretty much only get to with a ratchet, so that's what to do. And once you remove those bolts, they should separate. And the top will come out, and the bottom will come out. And the bottom takes a little bit of work typically, but in this case we're okay. Okay, we're going to take these, we're going to set them off to the side. And there's also a rubber gasket around here. Um, just be gentle. If yours is in good shape, just gently take it off because uh, not all big bore kits come with one of these. So if you can keep it in good shape, that's a bonus. Right. So right here we have our spring tensioner. Um, you can do this at any point, but uh, I just like to get it out of the way and get it done. So we want to crack that bolt. Correct it has. All right, so here's the here's why I'm doing that. You all you have to do is take off these two bolts, and then your tension is released. But if you wait to crack this bolt until it's already off of the motor, then it's very hard to hold that tiny piece and crack something that's pretty tight from the factory. So right. I like the to next crack step it right to away. Do is to remove the rocker assembly. So we're going to go ahead and remove these. I don't know if it makes a difference, but this holds the entire unit right here, and you'll see what I mean in a minute. So I like to take them off in a star pattern so that it preserves any gaskets or anything like that. So I'm going to do this one, this one, this one, this one, and at least when I loosen it. And I don't know, it's just an old... old I can't help it kind of thing. We're going to go ahead and remove all these nuts. And there's a washer, a nut and a washer on every one. So we're going to make sure we have those all the way around. They're all the same size, so there's nothing to worry about there. gotten all four of those. We can move on. All we have to do is pull the rocker assembly out, give it a couple little shakes. Um, I always recommend taking a picture of every step as you're taking out because right here it's easy to know which way it goes. Here's an upside down F, upside down S, upside down E, upside down X. If I had a picture of this, when it comes time to reassemble, I can instantly go back to that and make sure that that's how it is. So what we're going to do is go ahead and pull it out now that we've documented the way it was in there. And I'm, I want you to be gentle taking it out, and here's why. Underneath that rocker assembly, there's two spacers. There's going to be one on this top corner here and one on the bottom corner here. And those, if you can get them with your fingers, those are going to need to come out too. Okay, at this point, we can see our camshaft and our chain. So now is when we take off that spring tensioner. Right now that spring is under tension, so there's no way we're going to get it off of there. So we're going to go ahead and pull this tensioner off now. And if you don't have a 
you don't have a driver like I do, you know, that's fine. Just use hand tools and, uh, you know, they'll get you by just the same. These things are usually on there pretty good, so remember it's cast or aluminum, so just be gentle with it. Give it a couple taps till it loosens, then pull it out. There's a gasket in there, and that's what it looks like, and it's under spring tension, so. So that's why we remove that. I'm going to leave that gasket on there. Um, it doesn't really matter right now because I'm going to put a new gasket on there. So now that that's loose, we're going to go ahead and remove our chain. Again, I double and triple checked that we're on top dead center, meaning the top holes on the, the top and the two small holes were lined up with the lip. So now that I know that that's all kosher, we're going to go ahead and work on removing this chain. As you do this, be very careful not to drop this chain down the jug. If you drop the chain down the jug, it's going to go to the bottom of your case and you are not going to be happy about it. That's going to be extra work for you. So I'm going to move you over here so you can see better what I'm doing. So I'm holding the chain in my hand. Now there's also a bottom guide down here that we're going to take out later. Okay. So I'm going to lay that carefully, that chain, I'm going to lay it carefully so it won't slide in there. At this point, we have two more bolts to take out, and that's this one right here. I'm trying to get you there. Not a lot of room in here. And one down there. So we want to take off these two that are on the side of the cylinder head. I'm going to go ahead and do that now. And you can hang out with me while I do it. Alright, those are removed. They're going to be longer bolts, so you'll always remember where they go. So we'll set those off to the side here. And at this point, we're ready to take off our cylinder head. So. Make sure you have a good view of what I'm doing. We're going to give this guy a little tug. If it's on there, real good. Just give a couple taps with a rubber mallet or something. Uh, that gasket might be holding it. And again, we're going to be gentle taking this off. Because I'm going to reach underneath. I'm going to grab that chain. Make sure it does not fall in there. So I'm going to set this off to the side now. And we're ready to remove our cylinder again. I'm at top dead center. I'm going to check our flywheel, and we still are. So this one might need a little love to get out. So I'm going to go grab a rubber mallet. All right, I'm back with my persuader. So I know it's at top dead center. Um, so we're going to go ahead and give it a couple whacks. One thing I forgot to mention, again, there's two more spacers here. So uh, one on this top corner and one on this bottom corner. And what these do is make sure that your head and your cylinder is aligned right. So pull those off. Again, good thing to take a picture of as you're moving on. There we go. Just two little tiny simple wax gave it, let it free. So let's work it out of there. Now remember it's holding your piston. So, um, you know, you're just going to want to be gentle. Another thing to remember is, is make sure you don't go out of top dead center. So if you can see here where my hand is. I'm going to kind of hold the flywheel too. I'm going to make sure that I stay in top dead center. Okay, and then I'm going to reach around. Now that I'm out of the piston, I'm going to hold that chain and then let it drop down. All right, here we are, guys. Now, I mentioned that the chain tensioner was needed to come off and there it is, that's what I just pulled out. And there's that tensioner, and we're going to get to that in a second. Just, it's okay that that came out. This top one's going to stay in, okay? Don't touch it. It shouldn't pull out or anything, but nonetheless, just let it be. All right, all you Rouse Motor fans, uh, this can be incredible hard for you to see, but I'm going to do the best I can. Um, a couple things I want to point out right away. I don't know if you'll be able to see this yet, but... On the piston, on the top here, it says in, 
and it's actually upside down as you look at it, but it says in, I-N. Um, that is the intake, so we want to make sure that that in is up top. Um, and then right in here, let me get a pliers, and then right, oops, sorry, I'm trying to get where you can see, right here in this hole is a simple pin or clip that we have to get out. And it's not necessarily easy, but um, but we'll do it. And I'm gonna try to get you positioned so you can see the best you can. Nothing about it's gonna be good, but we'll try our best here. I have replacement pins, so honestly, I'm not too worried about damaging the pin. I just don't wanna damage anything else. So, looks like I'm starting to make some headway here. And there it pulled out. And there it is. So at this point, I can set my pin down, and I'm going to dispose of that. I wouldn't use it again in an engine. From this point, we're going to be able to hopefully slide our connecting pin through it. So we're going to find something to do that with. Okay, I got a little piece of it there. I'm going to try to grab it. Pull it out, there we go. Make sure you guys can see what I'm doing here. Got a little piece of it, and here it comes. And we just got out enough to pull past the engine, or past the uh, connecting rod, and there's our old piston. So we'll slide that in there. All right, here we are back at the bench. So let's take a look at our old piston and our new piston. That's a substantial difference there. So that should change your game a little bit, help you up hills, help you get going faster. Also, in my experience, is it helps you resale your scooter. So um, all right, so let's go ahead and put our rings on. There's many ways to do it. People like to do it in their own order. Uh, somebody's gonna say I'm doing it wrong and I will say somebody else is doing it wrong it's just all a matter of opinion as long as they're in there and they're in there correctly doesn't matter what order and how you do it in this particular oil ring it actually has a flange on the inside so on this one you have to put the oil ring on first and that's just something that I noticed before I did it so I'm gonna put the oil ring in first so the oil ring is gonna go on this wide groove on the way bottom so we're going to work it in there, make sure you don't kink it or bend it and slipped right in. We're going to take one of the other skinnier rings and we're going to put this one right on the bottom of that one. And it will take some finagling. You have to work on it a little bit. Just take your time, do it right. There it's starting to pop right in. And we just want to make sure that we don't warp it or anything, but um, you know, for the most part they're somewhat resilient. And there it popped right in the bottom there. So we're going to take our other skinnier spring, or ring, I'm sorry, and we're going to put it right in there too. We're going to work that around, and there you can see where that just popped in there, and we're going to work it all the way around, being gentle as we can, but as aggressive as we absolutely have to be. There we go. So that one's in there looking good and we're going to align these rings in a minute so don't get ahead of me the black ring is going to go in the middle slot so we're going to go ahead and work that in there there we go now we'll just work it around There we go, popped right into place. And now our silver ring on the top. And that one popped right in place. So here's the most important part. We want to make sure that every groove is separated. See how this silver one has a groove? And let me find the black one to show you. Here's the black one right here. And then the oil ring on the bottom, that also does. So we have to offset all those. So I'm going to find the gap on that oil ring.
There it is. Okay, and I want to make sure that it's separated from the gap on the rings that hold the oil ring. So we got to find the bottom one now. We're in good shape there. I'm actually going to slide this bottom one over just a hair. Just for peace of mind. Sorry if I'm pulling out a camera. I'm trying to reach over the camera here too. There we go. Slid over just a little bit. Now I'm going to take the oil ring. I'm going to offset it. So it's not near another gap. And so we'll put that one there. And then we're going to take the top ring and we're going to offset it so it's not by any other gaps either. So there's a gap. There's a gap. So we're going to take this one and just put it right about here. And then we're going to move the gap on this bottom set over to give it some space. So now we'll go a little bit more. Okay, so now we have a gap here, we have a gap here, and then our black ring, it's over on this side. And then we're going to move that just a hair here. So just make sure, just make sure that none of your gaps are lined up. So you have a gap here, and the reason is if they're lined up, it is going to help oil and air pass through and you won't get as good a compression. I also, I don't know if this is a thing or not, but I also don't like to have any gaps over right here because there's less structural integrity in my opinion. So now that we've done that, we're going to put the pin in. All right, so now that we have our rings on, we're going to go ahead and get ready to be prepared to put it actually on the motor. So I have more room to work on the left side in this scooter. So when I'm putting the final pin in, uh, or clip, that holds the piston in place, I want to work from the left side. So I'm going to put the pin on the right side. So, or I'm sorry, the clip on the right side. So um, I've kind of started it here, but you just grab it and kind of twist it in. It'll probably pop out here, but um, just take your time, work it. It takes time and patience, which is a couple things I don't have, but I'm almost there. There we go. And you just want to find it. You want to make sure that that pin is seated all the way around, or that clip, I keep calling the pin. Make sure that's seated all the way around because this is what's going to hold your piston to your connecting rod. So again, I'm going to double check to make sure all my rings aren't, the gaps aren't overlapped and we're in good shape. There's my in. Now what I can do is just take my pin, stick it in there a little bit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to stick it in there just enough so I can go drop it on the engine. So while we're here, I'm going to go ahead and remove the gasket off of this so I can pull out my chain tensioner. So this is the old jug that we had. So I'm going to set that off to the side. I have a nice clean workstation here. All right, so one thing that we're going to do at the bench before we get to the scooter is we're going to prep our cylinder jug for initial startup. So when we first start this up, there's no oil flowing to it. So we want to make sure it's safe. So I have just some Lucas assembly lube. You can get this at any parts store. Um, they just sell a lot of places. So I do make sure I clean my finger. I don't want any de debris in there, any crud, anything. So I'm just going to take a clean finger, put a dab on there. I'm just going to coat the inside wall of the cylinder head with the assembly lube. Um, you know, this is a step, in my opinion, that's absolutely crucial because it does not take long on one of these scooters or any engine, as hot as they run, to run without oil, it does not take long to ruin it forever. So if you put this assembly lube in there, then you don't have to worry about anything on your initial startup. When you first start it up, you're protected. So uh, that's the beauty of doing it at your home or in your shop is that you know it's being done right. So at this point, we're ready to get to the scooter and put it all back together. All right, at this point, we're going to go ahead and put our piston on. So what we're going to do, and this probably the most challenging part of the whole build but uh, it's not terrible so again I have my uh, piston where it says in hopefully the lights not too bad but 
that says I in right there in for intake so we want to make sure that's facing up and we're gonna slide down the middle of these studs and I'm gonna try to get it on this connecting rod here what I'm gonna do and I'm sorry that my hands are in the way I don't know another way to do this but I'm gonna get it in there slide the connecting rod through or the, uh, the pin through the connecting rod you just gotta give it some work make sure it's angled right there it goes so I'll bring you over here give you a better look if I can, you're going to be somewhat upside down, I'm sorry, but um, I'm going to put you upside down. Hold on. So there it is there. So it's through there. Sorry to put you guys upside down like that, but I want to make sure that you're confident and competent to do this on your own at home. So. Um, try to get you as steady as possible here. So now that pin slid right in. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. I'm going to push it on this side in as far as I can go and now I'm ready to put my clip in which is right here. And this is the tough part because you don't have a lot of room so uh, I struggle with these a lot and I struggle even more when I don't have a lot of room. So I'm going to do my best here. I'm going to let you watch. Um, and now you can see why I put the rod in, or I put the first clip in on the right side of the piston so that when I slid the pin in, I could work on this left side, which has more room by default. There is not a chain tensioner, and there's just generally a little bit more room. So, <clears throat> let's see if I can get this thing in there. Alright, I think we're in, and I'm going to just cut so I can just double check it. All right, guys, I wanted to bring you in here real tight. Let's see if I can show you that that pin is, in fact, in there all the way. There's just not a lot of room to work here, but um, it is in there, and we are ready to move forward. All right, we're at the stage now that we put the piston in, that we are going to put the cylinder jug on. We've cleaned off any old gasket material here. Um, with a razor blade and let me just use caution remember that this is all aluminum so a razor blade is steel and it will scratch the surface and cut into it so at this point I'm gonna go ahead and wipe down any residual that I have left over and I'm gonna use some gasket maker getting the screen here and I'm just gonna put a really light coat around here now this is one of those things that if you talk to ten guys, five are going to say you have to, five are going to say, why would you do that? Um, you know, I'm one of those guys that's kind of like, yeah, why not? You know, um, I'm not totally against it. I think any extra protection is good, but um, let me just advise, don't glob it on there. Just kind of use a light coat. It's just a little extra insurance. All right, I've got my gasket material on there. Um, ready to slide the gasket down. Before I do that, that spacer I was talking about that slid up, I'm gonna slide that down and get it into its home. There it goes. I'm gonna take our gasket. Now I'm gonna show you the proper way. I've never seen this on a how-to video. So here's the gasket. There's two ways it could go. It could go like that or it could go like that. So this is crucial that it's right. So the way you tell is that you get your actual jug and look at it the way it would go. So here's my jug. Back you up here a little bit. Lift you up. And that spot right there needs to mesh up with that one right there. So that's how you tell the difference. So 
I know when I flip this over the way it's going to go on that that slot that I just told you about is right here on this side. So I want to make sure that our gasket goes on exactly like that. So there it is and that's how my gasket would go on. So we're going to slide it on just like that. If you don't do that It will be the biggest regret of the build, I promise you that. So let's get this on. We're just going to take our time. We're going to go nice and slow. And we're going to get the piston up in there. And before we get too far, we need our chain in there with us. So being very careful again that we don't drop that down into the crankcase. We're going to pull that chain through. And I don't want to rip that gasket. So here is where taking your time is a good thing. And slip our piston through it. You know, you really could put this on your cylinder jug before you put it in, but I would really prefer to do it this way so I can make sure that everything lines up. I want to make sure that it's the way it should be and that it slides correctly over those two shims on the right side. The bolt holes line up and all that good stuff. So we are looking pretty good here. We're ready to move on to the next step. We can finally put our cylinder in there. I'm just going to double check and clean out this little oil hole here and make sure that that has plenty of space to send oil up. We're going to take our cylinder jug and we're going to slide it down. Get it right into there. We're going to get it over our holes here. Taking our time. Okay, we want to make sure that the top cha chain, chain guide is up in there. And then we want to run our chain through it. So I'm going to reach down and work it up. Hopefully it'll cooperate, which it usually does. There we go. And then we're going to reach down, grab our piston, and line it up. I just, oh, I lost my chain. And like I said, I got lucky because if that would have fallen in the crankcase, then you guys could all laugh at me. So, um, one thing that I do sometimes, I've just done a lot of these, so I don't, you know, you kind of get overconfident a little bit, but you can take a zip tie and just run it through this and then keep it real loose, and then that'll keep it from dropping down into your uh, crankcase. So I'm going to reach under, I'm going to get to my piston here. And now, here's what you're going to see. We have to get that piston into that jacket. Now the jacket is beveled, so it will slide in there. So stand by and watch me do that there. Okay. Making progress here. Reach under and kind of wiggle it in. There it goes. Make sure I still have my chain hanging. And I'm just going to slowly work that into place. Making sure everything's clear. And there it goes. It butted up real nice. Now you can see in here there's a little bit of assembly lube coming out and that's a good thing. That's why it's in there. It's protection. So I'm just going to take a little bit of the excess and pull it up. The rest of it I'm fine with. I'm not worried about too much but I do want to make sure that this sur these surfaces here are nice and clean and dry. So I'm going to make sure to get all that off. So at this point we can put our bottom chain tensioner in and what we want to do is we want the grooved rails facing up and the short side after the little T there that's going to go in. So we're going to lift up our chain, we're going to slide that right in and there it is. We're in good shape. Next step 
we're going to put our shims in. And if you took a picture like I asked you to, then you have an easy reference. If you didn't, I'll tell you right now. So, um, one goes up here. And you know, here, let me give you a little tip too. If you get in real close, you can see that this hole here is not as big as this hole. So if you're in a bind and you didn't take a picture and, and you're tired of listening to me or don't want to watch the video anymore, that's how you tell. You'll see there's a little bit of a gap. So you could slide those in. But if not, just rewind this video or go back to this video and check it out. So there's our shims. Let's put our head on. All right, so now when we put our head in, we want to work our gasket on there. And the gasket is pretty easy to tell. This is the metal gasket that comes in your kit. And that's pretty easy to tell the side that you want. The way you want it to go is you're going to have a big opening and then a little tiny groove right there. That's going to go on this side. So we're going to go ahead and slide that on, pull our chain up through it, and take our time. And again, this is the metal gasket that came with your kit. The one that we put in between the jug and the engine, that was just a typical gasket. Now we're ready to put the head on, so we're gonna we're gonna take the big studs that we put on there at the bench, those are gonna face upwards. We have our spacers in there, we're gonna slide our chain through and work it in, take our time. Make sure that chain doesn't drop down in there. We have our gasket. Everything's kosher. We're going to make sure that that butts up real good against those spacers, and they do. So at this point, what we can do is we can take these two long bolts that we pulled out of the side right over here, and we can install those and just snug them down. And what that'll do is that's going to hold everything in place. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my ratchet. You know, on these ones, they don't need to go all the way in super hard. What I want to do is just give them a quick little snug. They're going to hold everything in place for us for just a moment. And we'll call that good. Now, this is important, and take your time on this. We want to make sure that those holes line up as we talked about before. So, if this ratchet was the side of that cylinder head, that's how we want it lined up. What those two dots lined up like so. So we need to put it in that exact position. Uh, I don't think I can emphasize that enough. If you do a big bore kit and it doesn't start, this might be the first thing you check. So, I think that I got lucky and nailed it on the first try. So, I'm just going to pretend like I do that every time. At this point, we can put our spacers in. So we have a spacer and a spacer. And we can put our rocker assembly on. We're going to make sure this guy's lined up nice. Um, there's not notches or anything that hold it on that one, but there is on this rocker assembly. So, when we put that on, it should give us not much of a choice. You have to kind of hold these rockers up so it doesn't bind it all up. There we go. Yeah, and then you want to kind of wiggle your sprocket and cam, make sure that it's seated properly, and in this case it is. And we can take our bolts and washers, I'm sorry, our nuts and our washers, and put them in. So we have a washer for each one.
We have a nut for each one. Oops. Dropped one there. Okay, when we initially snug this up, be very gentle. We're not ready to torque it yet. We just kind of want to get it snug down in there so we can torque it. So you're going to do it in a star pattern. So we're going to do this one, this one, this one, and this one. So we're going to do it in a star pattern. But I'm not torquing it down yet or anything like that. All I want to do right now is get it tight enough where I can use my torque wrench and get them to spec. Alright, so I'm going to get it one last little... They may always go in star patterns on these. The reason being is that you have two gaskets all in this set here. And if you just crank down on one side and then the other, it's going to warp that gasket. So let's get a torque wrench get to work. All right, guys, I'm bringing you back up here so you can see. Um, this manufacturer recommends that this bore kit is at 13 foot pound torque. So um, that's. Everyone I've seen so far, but you know, I recommend doing your research, but I always see them at 13. I'm gonna do it in small increments. And I always take my time because this is not really something you want to over torque or under torque, so. So if you don't have a torque wrench, you can get one at a place like Harbor Freight for very cheap. It's well worth it. Um, I don't recommend taking a chance and just snugging it where you think it should be. Um, you know, go hit up Harbor Freight or Walmart or whatever. Get yourself a cheap torque wrench and, uh, and keep wrenching. All right, now we're ready to put the chain tensioner back in. So, um, you know, remember I showed you that before. This is that bolt that I cracked. When you take it out, careful because it's spring loaded. I'm going to take out that spring too. And then there is a little latch right here. Push that down, slide that all the way down. So it should look like that. And I'm going to keep the okay, bolt Okay, I'm bringing out. you in closer to the chain tensioner to show you. So there's just a simple gasket. Um, it should only go on there one way, but as long as it's covering what it's supposed to cover, you're in good shape. So. Um, that looks good to me. And then we're going to take our chain tensioner and you will see that this will only go in one way too. So um, we're going to slide that in. Careful not to mess up our gasket, which I did. I'm trying to do this one handed. And I'm going to take my bolts and work those in. Next bolt, making sure I have both the gasket and the tensioner. And then we're going to bolt that back into place. Okay, and then from that point, we take that bolt with the spring that I told you about, and we're going to place that. should look just like that. If that spring comes out, it's fine. Just put it right back in there. We're going to slide it down that hole, and you're going to hear your tensioner click, 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 click all the way down there, and it's going to give that chain the 
attention that it deserves. And then we'll go ahead and tighten that back up. Don't go crazy, don't want to strip it. Okay, all right, now we're gonna adjust the valves to make sure we have the proper valve clearance. Okay, so what we wanna do is we wanna make sure that both valves have the proper clearance. So on the top here, we have our intake valve, and on the bottom, we have our exhaust. So what we need to do is take a nine millimeter, and you're gonna loosen this nut right here, which I've already done, but just loosen it until it's loose. And this one, I can't move it at all, so that clearance is way too close. So we're gonna relieve that what we want to do is get it to 0 0.004 or 0.1 millimeter. So um, here's a feeler gauge. Let's try to catch you in the light there. And what we're looking for is 0 0.004. This is another one of those things that eight people will tell you different answers on. With all my experience, 0 0.004 on both intake and exhaust is just fine and works great. So what we're going to do is we're going to get in here and adjust those clearances. So this is how we do that. I'm going to take a pliers, and they make tools for this, but again, you know, this is your garage. I want to make sure tools that you might have. After you loosen that nut, there's a bolt inside of it with a square head. So I'm just going to take that, and I'm going to turn it out until it's somewhat loose, and there I can feel it rocking back and forth. Hear it clicking, so now I know that I have a little bit of clearance. Now I'm going to take my .004 feeler gauge. I usually bend it just a little bit to get it in there. It's easier on the exhaust side anyway. And so I'm still too tight, so I'm going to turn that out until it drags just a little bit. And I don't want to go so hard where it hangs up. I want to turn it out until it, there it drags just a little bit. So I'm going to hold it. until I find that sweet spot where it just barely holds up. So I'm just going to leave it there so I'm going to need it in a second and while I'm holding my exact position I'm just going to simply tighten up that nut. Okay. And we're right where we need to be. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing on the exhaust side down here I've already loosened that nut, and it seems like I have some clearance there, so I'm going to just go ahead and slide my feeler gauge in there. This is harder for you to see, and it's also hard for me to see. I've got my feeler gauge in there. Let me get it right where I need. Take my pliers, find that happy spot. loosen that nut a little bit more. I didn't back it out enough, so. Take my pliers again. Okay, there we got a little bit of drag. I'll let that hang. I'm going to try to hold my position. Start tightening up that nut. All right, let's check our clearance. Okay, that looks good. At this point, we're ready to put the valve cover back on. Some people use gasket maker or even put a gasket there. I don't. Uh, this is a new scooter. Uh, a lot of these have a gasket, a little rubber seal built into them. This one's in perfect shape, so we are not going to make any kind of special gasket for it. So we're going to go ahead and put it on. Just install it, bolts in. And I'll get back to you once I have all my bolts in. One thing to point out on uh, these newer 50cc scooters, uh, you notice I didn't put the bolts in down here. And that is because if you saw the head earlier, there's no bolts to put there and there's no hole for the vacuum line. This is an emission system that we're completely removing. So basically there's no hole from this pipe 
to come all the way up in here and come out there. So that is gone now. These, these big bores won't run with them, so they don't have them. So if you get to this point, don't worry, this is okay. All right guys, let's get the carburetor back on there. I have a gasket from the gasket set that came with the kit. We're gonna go ahead and put that on the intake. And then I have the original grommet that came off of my original head. So we're gonna put that on there. This one's in perfect shape. They're real rigid plastics. They typically do just fine. Um, and then we're at a point where we can put the carburetor on. All right, before you put your carburetor intake and all that back on, we need to put the plastic housing back on here. And there's that gasket that I referenced earlier. And so we just want to determine which way that goes. And then we want to just slowly work it in there. We want to be cautious that we don't damage it. I have uh, had many scooters that didn't even have one of these on there because they've been broken and long gone, but they serve a purpose. So I like to keep them as intact as I can. Alright, at this point we've got our gasket on. We're going to put our bottom panel in. It's just a little plastic piece should go in there. If it doesn't, just slowly work with it until it hits its spot and you'll feel it kind of clip into place a little bit. We'll take our top one slide it on top just like we did the other and there's a tab this tab here on this side needs to go on the outside and then on this side that has the clip that's where the bolt goes so we want that on the inside you've got some things to go around and clear so just work it in Go. It seems to be going right into place. All right, I feel good about that. Right, go ahead and bolt it all together. This one on this side is a little bit hard to get. Alright, we're all tacked up, ready to get this carburetor on. So I'm going to cut my line that I made earlier. And we're going to slide our intake right over our studs. And we're going to get make sure that it's not sitting on the plastic. See how I, I just had to move the plastic there to get it in there correctly. And it fits in perfect. Put our bolts on. And we'll tack them down. Okay, so we have some vacuum lines to put in. So we have this small one. It actually comes from the fuel regulator there, and this vacuum helps deliver fuel. So this guy is just going to go back where it came from. Remember, take pictures and maybe draw pictures of where things came from. Make sure that the vacuum line gets underneath this. I see a lot of times they come back not running, it's because the vacuum line was sitting here and then the seat came down on it and pinched it off. So get it underneath there. We also have one coming here. So we're going to get that guy back on. Okay, we're going to get that underneath the seat mount. Okay, so we also had this one right here. That's the only one we have left to do. That one is no longer required because what that is is this one here and it would go in there and it would come up here and that's an EVAP unit and then the big tube came down and that was the big tube.
that came in right here. So if you remember it earlier, I said that there's no longer a channel here. So no air is going through here or exhaust or anything. So we're going to take that whole EVAP system out. And I'll show you how to do that. Okay, what I've done to take out the emission system, since this new system with the big bore kit does not use it, we will not need the big tube that came right here. And we will not need this line. So we can go ahead and remove it. And what we're going to remove is this right here. And all it is is it's two tubes and it goes, one goes down to the valve cover and the other one goes to the intake. So it's just, it'll pull right up. It's on a, a little clip and it'll pull right up. And then here I have it down here and I can start pulling it out. And so, so ultimately this whole unit should slide right out. And that's what it looks like right there. It's just a big octopus. It's just a emissions control type deal. All right, guys, time to mount the exhaust. There is a small round washer that you want to get in between your exhaust and your intake. And that little groove that I showed you where the exhaust comes out of the head, that's where that goes. Um, I always mount that on the bench. It's easier. You can kind of get it into place, but it'll be, it'll have a metal side and a gasket side, and that's the exhaust gasket. So push that in there, metal side first, and then go ahead and mount your exhaust. So let's do All right, we have installed a big bore kit. We've put everything back together, double checked the oil, made sure it's on top dead center. We're ready to fire it. Let's see how it goes.